Welcome back to Taji's World of Books and this is my weekly reading wrap up. So welcome back and this is going to be my weekly reading wrap up. This week I really read and finished out all of the Jacqueline Frank novels in terms of her main series which is the Nightwalker series. I filled some clips about that. I'll insert those in here and then we'll talk about to try to wrap it all up. So now I'm going to interject the Shadow Dweller, which is the second phase. Because remember, there are Night Walkers, there are Shadow Dwellers, and then there's going to be the second phase, which is the spin off novels, and that is in the world of the Shadow, the world of the Night Walkers. So what we're going to do to try to make this succinct and make sense is I'm going to go ahead and go to the clips. We're going to finish off the, um, the World of the Nightwalker series and then we'll come back. So as I had mentioned before, I'm moving into the Shadow Dweller series by Jacqueline Frank. And so this is the first book in the Shadow Dweller series. This is part of the Nightwalker world. I have finished the first six books, I think, in the Nightwalker world which is focused on an individual um, character, he hero, in that, that's in the Nightwalker world and his heroine or counterpart. And um, mainly it's covered the demons, but we did have the book on Damien and Damien is a vampire in the Nightwalker world. And so now part of the Nightwalker world, as we have said, is lycanthropes demons, vampires, and shadow dwellers. And so these are then the shadow dwellers. And this is the first book in this series. And this is about Trace. And his counterpart is Ashla. And this book was really good. It gives you an introduction into the shadow dweller society, which is um, a very hierarchy society that has a nobility. And then they have a senate. Then they also have a priests. And the priests have a a very significant role in this society. Um, they basically drive the moral compass, but priests are allowed to marry. And well, they're allowed to take a long-term partner who is a priestess who is going to be with them for the duration of their lives, basically. Um, and so Trace is raised by his adopted father, and his adopted father is one of these priests that we have that I have just mentioned, and his name is Magnus. And so what happens is that Trace is in the shadow realm, and it, as he is in the shadow realm, tracking and tracing someone, he encounters um, an enemy, and the enemy basically tries to kill him. But as they are battling they both recognize that Ashla is able to see them and she is not supposed to be able to see them, but she can. And so this then starts a mystery and he obviously is immensely attracted to Ashla, but he shouldn't be attracted to her because she is what is considered, this book is like, so it's so complicated to, to, to explain. In the shadowscape, in the shadowscape realm where they are having this battle, where Ashla sees him, she shouldn't be able to see him because she should be, what's like considered a wraith basically and it's forbidden for um, shadow dwellers and wraiths to get together but he is just obsessed and with her and wants to embark upon a relationship and so this is a, a forbidden romance it is fighting against the things that you know you shouldn't want but you want them anyway but and then also when your counterpart his father Magnus his best friend the people that love him come to aid him and try to bring him back he's trying to explain to them this is more than just obsession i feel something i have a connection with her please believe me let me demonstrate and trying to get people to believe him and then there's also a component of trace has a history of being a prisoner of war and being abused and neglected and um and being tortured and so he has to deal with when they capture him and bring him back they have to restrain him to prevent him from harming himself. And so, again, it's a story of loyalty and trust and love. These books are older books, and so they're sort of problematic 
you know, they're written in 2009, right? So it's like 10, 12 years ago. And so things that are okay in this book in terms of pressing boundaries and proximities and um, consent and whether or not you do have consent and how you treat women, it, it, it would come into question, but I understand what the author was trying to convey when she was doing this, so, or when she wrote these books. So it's, you know, those people that are used to reading books currently written and the way that books are currently written might not necessarily like how this is written because Trace recognizes that Ashla is a submissive and so he pushes her and he pushes her boundaries to the limit and she allows him and she wants it but there are some scenes that one would consider non-consensual even though there is consent it's kind of complicated so just if you decide to read it go into that knowing that okay so then the second book there are only three books in this particular aspect of the Nightwalker realm so and this is the second book in the series and this book is called Rapture and Rapture is with um, Magnus who is the head priest and Denaria and there it he basically it, it is there's something that comes out in the last book and he is forced to make some changes in his household but there's an evil and a rot within the priesthood and the sanctuary that you you're starting to see that it like reminds me of a Greek tragedy in the sense that within the Senate within the sanctuary the priest sanctuary there's deception there's lies there's you're trying to figure out who who put uh, who who put whom up to what so it's a who what when where so there's a mystery and a thriller behind the scenes going on even despite the fact that there is this love story that's developing i didn't like this book as much again they are pushing boundaries and trying to cause people to stretch outside of their comfort zone. So there's a lot of things that happen in these books that I feel like I don't like how the women are treated, but I also don't like how the woman in this book treats the male counterpart. So they give as much as they get type thing. So there are several problematic things I think in this particular book. Um, Daenerys, her power is that she becomes like a berserker. So she is tortured. She, it was a slave in her history when she's found by Magnus. And so as a result, she is, when she starts to fight and fight for what she wants, she becomes like like in a bloodlust. So, you know, again, I, I really like these books and they're riveting and I'm like sucked in and I enjoy every aspect of it. Like I said, there are several aspects that are very, very problematic that I think today's readers that are of a certain age would read this and not be okay with. And they would feel like Magnus was bullying her because Magnus is like used to being in control and he's used to having his way and he's used to people doing what he wants. And so there's several scenes where he's like, you know, one would consider he manhandled her, but Daenerys is no slouch and she manhandles him right back and she like backhands him. And so I don't know, like it just, there are certain aspects, like I said, that just seem problematic for me that a today's reader might not necessarily be on board, but I love these books nonetheless. I still was sucked in. There was, it, there was a purpose to everything. So she's trying to bring out things in Magnus and he's trying to bring out things in her. So he's saving her as much as she's saving him type situation. But the story and the imagination and the world building and all those things that Jacqueline Frank has built is beautiful and wonderful nonetheless. And so I still liked it. So just go into that if you do decide to read these knowing that there are some problematic aspects of these books. Now back to the back to the regular clip. See you over there. Talk about the last book. So the last book is Pleasure in the Shadow Dwellers and I love this Shadow Dwellers because each book is about a different Shadow Dweller. This one was about Trace. Then Rapture was about Mag Magnus and his significant other. And then this one is finally about Malaya, who is the queen, and then her bodyguard, um, whose name is Gwen. But you also get a story, a short, a short story about, it's interesting the way that they set the book up. So the book starts off with a penance priest named Sagan and he is was kidnapped in this book and so we find out what happens to him in this book and he has a significant other who is a natural born white witch 
whom he encounters in this book, right? So, um, and Sagan is important because Sagan then comes up here and we need him. Okay, so this book is really um, a forbidden love story between, and it's a bodyguard romance between her bodyguard and the princess. And she basically has denied, well, he has denied how he has felt about her for the entire 50 years that he's been her bodyguard. He's had to watch her engage in other relationships. He's had to watch her in all states and manners of undress and in her life. And he just stood by and watched, but quietly loved her the entire time. And so by the time he is like, he's she's being forced to marry, and he's like, I'm absolutely not gonna watch this. I'm not gonna watch you give in to the Senate because in this world, in this part of the Shadow Dweller world, though it's set up like basically like a Greek tragedy in that you've got the, the ruling body, which is the queen and the prince, her brother, and they duly rule this world. And then you've got the Senate that basically is behind the scenes and controls what they do, or they at least they try to. And so the Senate basically tries to force her to marry and Gwen is like, I'm not watching it. I'm not doing it. If you're gonna do what they tell you to do, then I'm out of here. And so it's a forbidden romance, it's a bodyguard romance, it's friends to lovers, it's age gap, it's all of the things. And they delivered so much in this book. It's also suspense, because you've got the backstory of who in all three of these books, it's like who is trying to kill off the priests, the pennant priests, who is killing off nobility, who's poisoning who, what's happening with that. So Jacqueline Frank really did a good job in terms of delivering in that sense. And as I read more, I really like her writing style more. Like when I first started off, I wasn't really feeling it all that much, but like definitely now I'm, I'm, I'm invested and into the world and in the world building that she has created here. So this was a five out of five star for me. So like I said, these are the three books that are in the Shadow Dweller world. So you had the Nightwalkers, and you're hearing all of the stories of what's going on with the demons and the vampires and the lycanthropes. Then the other type of Nightwalkers are Shadow Dwellers. So this is the Shadow Dweller series. So now we cap off with the Shadow Dwellers, we're done with that, and then we go into the last book in the Nightwalker series, which is Adam, and there are characters, like I said, that were introduced here, that come up here. And Adam is the brother of Jacob, book one, but we see Jacob throughout all of the Nightwalker books. And Adam has disappeared on Solstice, one night and nobody knows what happens to him. And so the story unfolds from there. And it is, again, a forbidden romance. It's about a romance between two different species. It's a mystery. It is a culmination of all of the battles that have been happening in all of the Nightwalker books with a enemy of old, if you will, that has tried to defeat them and they've had multiple battles throughout multiple scenarios throughout all of the books and this all came together and he also is trying to figure out how to fit in and where he fits and I don't want to give away too much because this is the culmination of everything it was great it's a five out of five star check it out I loved it I was really super happy with it and so that is the end of the Night Walker series okay so just to kind of wrap it up just so that we are all like on the same page because I know that it gets to be a little bit confusing and I think I want to just make make sense of this so these books are the main Nightwalker series remember and each guy has his own book the first book which is Jacob then you have Gideon then Elijah Damien, Noah, and then the final book in the main Nightwalker series is Damien. Okay, and so those are like that gives you the foundation of the world of 
night walkers and in that world as i've said before there are demons lycanthropes mistrels and so those are the six sort of um breed of the night walkers that they are aware of okay so then we moved into as we talked about before these are the shadow dwellers the shadow dwellers are part of the night walker world as well they are a type of night walker so we did these three books already and so they are each about a different character right so it goes ecstasy rapture and then pleasure so that then ends the the shadow dweller series so then we cap we have our night walkers we have our shadow dwellers and at the end of this we find out that there are 12 different night walker tribes and we only know about five right we know about vampires lycanthropes demons mistrels and shadow dwellers but here at the very end we learned there are 12 so who are the other 12 then we moved into the world of the night walkers so then that brings in the next book in the series and this is part of the world of the night walkers and this book is called forbidden and it kind of threw me for a loop, right? It threw me for a loop because I was like all in. I'm like all in for night walkers and shadow dwellers and she did a great job. And then we, I was like, oh, it's gonna be more of the same. No, it's not. This one is about someone named Dosha Waverly and Ram. And basically these are body dwellers. And so they're from an Egyptian race of people who continue on their lives by being body dwellers. So they dwell within, so basically if something happens to me and I have a near fatal accident, I have a near fatal accident and as a result of this near fatal accident, um, yeah, as a result of this near fatal accident, somebody else comes to dwell within my body and I share my body with this other party. Okay, and the story sort of takes on from there, but I was just, I was thrown. I, did, I, w I didn't understand it. I didn't like it. It didn't, her voice is different the way she writes. So I was like, why do I care about these characters? I don't, I'm confused. Um, the, and the, it, again, it's part of the Night Walker, so I guess they're Night Walkers, but they're not related at all to anything that we've been doing. This is like a completely separate and independent series that has nothing to do with what we read so far. So I was, that threw me for a loop. I didn't understand it. I was confused. I didn't necessarily like it. And so mm, I'm like, why do I care? So anyway, so this book for me was a three out of five star. I wasn't really invested and then they tried to make it like it's like this menage situation because within each body, right, is two people, right, two souls. So there's me and somebody else. So there's Ram and the guy Vincent, whose body Ram, Ram Ramses basically took over from, you know, the Egyptian god Ramsey took over Vincent's body. And now in Dosha, Dosha is the the prince the queen and then dosha as well and so they're like which one likes whom and is it forbidden because you know you're really meant to be with my king and i'm interested in you and so it was just all over the place and crazy and i wasn't feeling it so this is a three out of five stars so i was like what the heck is the point of that and then i'm reading currently the next book in that series which is forever same situation i'm like what the heck is the point of this so i'm going to try to get through it in my next clip i'll go ahead and tell you what, how those go but at any rate we're going to jump over to the next clip and i'll see you over there bye forbidden forever forsaken forged and then the last book which is the night walker okay so this round i read and each story is about a different character so this is about katrina and her gargoyle anvil this one is about doshin and ram this one is about leo and 
the night angel faith. And then Forsaken is about Jackson and his significant other who her name is Marissa. Okay, and so basically this then, and then there's the final book, which I'll insert over here, which is the culmination of the Nightwalkers. Okay, so these books are a spin-off series of the main Nightwalker. They're a different type. It's in the Nightwalker world. They are the six lost tribes of Nightwalkers. Each tribe, each six sets, so the main books, and then these guys don't know that each other exists because a curse was set upon them. And as a result of the curse, they don't know that each other exists. And in the spin-off series, that really sort of comes to culmination. And each of these books are basically, you, they're, um, they're body walkers. And body walkers exist in the soul and the body of one person. So you have two souls that exist in one body. And so each of these are forbidden romances. They're mixed interspecies dating. They are all sort of trying to come together. Each of the characters need to develop and world build so that they can come together in that final culmination of the final book, which is the Nightwalker. And in the Nightwalker, they bring together all the characters that you love from the main shadow or the main Nightwalker books to the second set, the spinoff, and they all sort of fight together to overcome this basic evil that has set upon the world and they are trying to defeat that. So I loved the main Nightwalker series the most. I loved, you know, Elijah and Gideon and Adam and all of the main, you know, Nightwalkers. Damien, I love those absolutely the most. These spin-off books were only a three out of five star for me. They weren't really that good. The final Nightwalker book was great because, was it great? It was still a four out of five star because it brought the characters that I loved back into the mix. And so we got to see those guys. Um, even if I were to rate this, this, the three sets of series, the Night Walkers, the Shadow Dwellers, and then this Body Walkers. I loved the Night Walkers the most, then the Shadow Dwellers, and I least liked the um, the Body Walkers, the, the final spinoff. So this was a cool ride. I was I'm glad that I did it, and um, it was an it it was good. Um, I could have just stopped with the main Nightwalkers books and I would have been happy, but I got to see some wrap up things of characters that were in the main Nightwalkers. Stuff happened with them after those books ended and so I really appreciated that and I loved that about these novels. And so overall it was a cool experience and this video is going to be super long so that's all I really have for today and I hope that you check it out. It's definitely worth it if you decide to do it. If you love paranormal romance, um, if you like a battle and you like you know a culmination of all of that, then I think the main Nightwalker series and then the Shadow Dweller series are definitely worthwhile. The third sets of books, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother but you know up to you if you decide you want to do it but that's all I have for today you guys thank you so much for joining me and remember I upload new videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday and I hope that you like this video and subscribe so you can come and hang out with me more often okay I'll see you next time bye